Hi there, and welcome back to our summer series stretching from June through August, in which we look back at some favorite episodes from, you know, throughout the years that I hope can bring a lot of value to you. And this week, uh, we are going to say thank you, first and foremost, to Michael Cohen, who posted a comment on Insomnia Insight number 322, saying, tremendously helpful. Thank you for keeping these classics still available. When I saw that, I immediately said thank you to Michael, of course, but I also thought, aha, this could be something for a summer series. I looked at it and I thought, this, this is a really nice one. In the episode that we're going to look at, I had identified five experiences that students often say are bizarre, strange, and think mean something is really wrong with them. Uh, one of them is sleeping very little, but still feeling energized, like not feeling tired, like not feeling sleepy at all. Another one is the, you know, the jerk just waking you up. And then we have, of course, the vivid dreams or spending the whole night feeling like you never quite slept. It was kind of this half sleep, you know, and we, we get to the root of all those experiences. And looking back at this video, which is from June 2020, so more than four years old, uh, I'm sort of struck with how, you know, things haven't changed much on one hand. Like uh, almost everything I say is like, you know, same things I would say today, although we have kind of more names for things. Like we have hypersleep now, for example, for that like half sleep. But overall, the teaching is, I think is very sound. And I hope you'll find it really, really helpful. Now, um, before we actually jump in and look at the episode, uh, I just want to say that there's there's some things that have changed. Um, and um, so in the video we're about to see, uh, you know, I kind of review some experiences and where they come from and how we can meet those. And I'm, I make like five points. And point one, two, three, I think are very sound, pretty much exactly what I would say today. Point four, that's where I see like, OK, here my understanding has changed. When I recorded this video four years ago, I somehow thought that anxiety or what's called like general anxiety was somehow different from insomnia. And if somebody has, you know, their sleep struggle is driven by kind of a general anxiety, then I say you could study the self-coaching model I say in this video. And my understanding now is uh, that, you know, there is no difference. You know, all the inner struggles come from the same place. And if somebody is anxious about something in their lives that, it, and it's, you know, they're, they're, they're anxious about something unrelated to sleep, like there's no fear of wakefulness, then the potential you know, difficulty sleeping that person may have is a sleep disruption. You know, it's just, it's similar to, uh, and the noisy neighbor, like right? a noisy neighbor keeps, makes us a little bit uh, vigilant and, and, uh, you know, annoys us and keeps us up. If we're anxious about like work and that keeps us up, that's, you know, just the natural consequence of what's, what's going on. Like it's, a, it's, it's, our sleep is disrupted and that's completely different from insomnia where we have an ongoing struggle rooted in the fear of not sleeping. Right. So there, my understanding has changed. And, um, I, I refer to something called the self-coaching model. I had learned about that from Brooke Castilla of the life coach school. And I think that the, 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 that model, which basically goes like there are circumstances uh, in our lives, like things that just happen, and we can think about them, uh, and our thoughts give rise to emotions, and, uh, and our emotions uh, you know, produce action or inaction, and from those actions, there are, there are results. I believe that is actually very, very true, and, and you know, that self-coaching model is actually not unique to the life coach school. It's also known as the cognitive model, although I believe this is true. I've now found that if we try to deliberately change or manipulate our thoughts, which the life coach school sort of promotes, I think that's very, very tricky. It's sort of like, you know, when you're talking to a person who has a different, let's say, political opinion, the more you try to change their opinion, the more they say like, no, 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 this is, this is like, my, my opinion is sound. I want to try to change yours. Like we, we often end up just in an inner struggle when we try to like forcefully change our thoughts. Uh, what I've come to believe now is more that, our thoughts, they change thanks to our education, uh, thanks to sort of like traditional textbook education, which we provide a lot of on this channel, and also learned experiences, going through things and, 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 and learning through, um, through experience. Uh, that, that leads to changes in our thoughts without us having to do anything in particular. Like thoughts change automatically. 
as we learn and, and experience things. And finally, I say in the end of this, the, the video we're about to see, I say, I say something like, if, if this resonates with you, you might want to check out the Self-Coaching Master Program. I didn't even remember that. I had created a whole program based on that, that model. Um, but uh, later, I, again, I found that it wasn't so helpful. But anyways, that, that Self-Coaching Program later sort of evolved into uh, our Insomnia Immunity Program, which we have now. So yeah, with that said, uh, I won't keep you longer here. Uh, hope you find a lot of value in this next uh, video in our summer series. See you soon. Bye for now. Hi there, and welcome to Insomnia Insight number 322. I'm Coach Daniel. I'm excited to have you here to talk about the five most common reasons somebody sends a, a comment, uh, submits a comment or an email saying, something is really weird, something really off is going on with me. When somebody says that, often very worried that something is terribly wrong, it's typically one of these five things that we're going to talk about today that they're experiencing, that you may be experiencing. We're going to talk about that, then we're going to talk about what is that underlying cause for these bizarre things going on, or seemingly bizarre things going on, and then we're going to talk about what you should do how you can uh, not have these experiences or, or have less of them or not, not maybe experience them the same way, perhaps. All right. So with that said, let's, let's, get, let's get started right, right away here with a, a very common one, and that is this one. You are just not sleepy at all. You're just not tired. And, you know, throughout the day, you have maybe even a sense of like, like this Elect electricity inside you, like, you know, you're, you're just, it's, it's bizarre, you know, that is a very common one. In fact, somebody asked about that the other day. So that's, let's say that's number one. And number two, I want to, uh, I want to call a Swiss awakening, something I came up with the other day. And, and this is when you like clockwork, wake up at a very specific time. Often people often think this is kind of bizarre. Like for some reason, I wake up exactly 4 a.m. Uh, every night, or I wake up exactly four hours after I fell asleep. That's number two. Another thing that often seems really bizarre. Uh, another very common one is this vivid dreams, you know, very like, you know, colorful dreams that, that seem to like, you know, one blends into the other, you know, this continuous episodes of vivid dreaming is a very common one that people often are very worried about. And often uh, it's, it's mingled with this question of like, is there something wrong with the type of my sleep? Am I in this weird, like, do I, is there something wrong with my sleep stages or something like that? And often a common question that comes with that one. And then we have a number four here, which is minimal sleep, you know, and that's often tied together with number one, which is like, I don't feel tired. So often you have this combination of like, it's so bizarre. I literally don't sleep hardly at all. You know, my entire night feels like a, a long episode of wakefulness. I can hear everything that's going on. I wake up at the drop of a hat if I'm even asleep. I'm not even sure if I'm asleep or not. People tell me I'm, I'm asleep, but I'm, I'm not sure about that at all. And I don't feel tired. You know, that combination often seems very bizarre. And then finally, we have a number five here, which is jerks and awareness. And these are like, you know, as you're about to fall asleep, you have a jerk or you have a twitch or you have some sensation or you have, or you become like you're about to fall asleep and then you feel like you're suddenly aware, oh, I was about to fall asleep or you're about to fall asleep and you have, uh, you know, the sense of falling and then you wake up, something of that nature. So uh, we've talked about these five things now, five things that often are described as very bizarre and you know, people that experience them again often think like there must be something really wrong with me. There must be something really, really weird going on here. And it, they're, 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 that's not the case. That is not the case. The reason this is going on is a lot of people probably know what I'm going to say now, which, but it is hyper arousal. These things are caused by hyper arousal. And by the way, in the sleep world, pretty much always when there's something bizarre, weird, strange, unexplainable going on, blame it on hyper arousal. That is typically the culprit, definitely the culprit when it comes to these five things. 
So for those of you who are a little bit newer to the channel, what is hyperarousal? Hyperarousal is just this heightened uh, emotional state where you are hyper aware of what's going on. Your senses are um, heightened. You you hear things you normally wouldn't hear. You see things that you wouldn't take notice of. You feel like every little thing that you feel becomes like, you know, em emphasized, you know, a little tingle. It becomes like, oh, I definitely feel that. I feel this twitch. I feel this. And so that is hyper arousal. And hyper arousal is pretty neutral. You know, it, 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 can, it can be caused by many uh, kind of underlying emotions, meaning you can be uh, very anxious and hyper aroused, but but if if you're if you're all anxious, then then that's a little bit different because then you know you know what's going on. You you um, identify anxiety with hyperarousal. It's more neutral. It's like you don't really you don't really feel anything in particular, and that's why these things so bizarre feel so bizarre because you you it seems like I, I I'm I'm not anxious. I'm pretty much in a normal state uh, of of you know uh, being. Uh, but all these things are happening. So hyperarousal has this kind of neutral tendency, which makes it more sneaky, more strange and bizarre. But again, so anxiety is one thing that can cause it, underlying anxiety. Excitement can also cause it. Um, and and uh, so, so the many reasons you can be, be um, hyperaroused. Now, what I want to say here before we talk more specifically about like what you should do if this is happening is... Uh, uh, I want to really try to normalize this, normalize hyperarousal. Um, there are many instances where you are very hyperaroused and you don't think anything of it. For example, uh, let's say you're going to get married tomorrow. You know, if you're going to get married tomorrow and you wake up like clockwork, you know, at 4 a.m. you're wide awake, or you, uh, you 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 have slept almost nothing, but you're still feeling like kind of very energized, or um, or you you sleep very little. Uh, or you, you have the dreams, like all that seems very normal. That's kind of expected. Or for that matter, if uh, you know, if you if you watch like the hundred meter dash and these you know these these people, these athletes are on the starting blocks. You know, they're super hyper aroused, right? They're you know super like ready for something to happen, and they often like jump. You know, if the, even somebody in the audience sneezes, so like a jerk is completely normal in that circumstance. And even like from a like a you know a, like real big picture historically, why do we have a hyper arousal? Well, it's, uh, I think, as many other things, many other um, emotions and, you know, states, states, states of mind, it is a safety thing, you know, we're supposed to be hyper aroused to make sure we're safe, et cetera. That's kind of the historic thing with it. So the thing, though, is, is that um, nowadays, you know, our, our minds can often get a little bit confused. You know, there's nothing straight, there's nothing unusual or strange with hyper arousal. It's just the context can be a little bit off, if you will. You know, uh, for example, a classic one is that you have a high peak jerk at some point, and then uh, you, you, for some reason, you take note of it and you think it's it's kind of odd and bizarre and strange. You think more of it and you become more and more hyper aroused, and then you can can have more of these events. For just just an example, so let's say you you um you you find uh, that one or more of these things are things that you've experienced. You know, what should you, what should you do? Number one, as always is education and really hopefully you'll feel that all the education you you needed was in this video about this uh, these uh these uh phenomena let's call them that and education is so important because when you understand why something happens when that is when you're demystifying something then the hyper arousal often by itself kind of comes down because oh you see like oh a lot of people have these. They're very calm and there's nothing strange. I'm just hyper aroused. You know, that in itself is so helpful in decreasing that hyper arousal. So education is number one. Now, number two, I want to mention here is resist that urge to Google, to Google it, you know, go online, figure out what's happening. And and that goes back to number one. If you if you don't understand what's happening, then of course you want to go online and try to figure it out. But now that you you understand hyper arousal, you understand why these uh, these things happen, then it will be hopefully easier for you to resist that urge. Because if you don't, if you go out and and you uh, you Google it, you go on a Facebook group, a Reddit group, talk about it, you get all all types of information that you know people suggest. Oh, it's your magnesium levels. No, it's selenium. No, it's this. No, it's that. And that you know, 
makes makes it seem more mysterious. You know, maybe it's that. Maybe you should do this. You, you pay more attention to these events, and, and you become more hyper aroused, and you have more of them. So it's always good to kind of resist the urge to try to figure out what's going on, and instead be like, okay, this is hyper arousal. Nothing strange with that. And number three here is allow yourself to have an experience that doesn't necessarily seem like something you want to have. And this is, I think this is particularly true for these hypnic jerks, hypnic awareness, uh, but, but even vivid dreams or like sleeping little, et cetera. If, if you're resisting that, if you're like, I don't want to have this, I don't want to go another night where I feel I didn't sleep at all. I don't want to have another night of vivid dreams. I don't want to have this hypnic jerk again. Then you 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 building kind of pressure. You you you, you um, I shall put it. You you you're really hoping that you won't have it, and that that hope that that wanting not to have it, you know, makes you pay extra attention to what's going on in your body, and and you're more likely to have it. When you go the other direction, you're like, all right, I, I might have this hypnic jerk when I'm about to fall asleep, but that's actually normal. It's a, it's a, it's a process of falling asleep. I might feel like I haven't. I I might feel tonight like. I don't sleep at all, but I know I do sleep more than I think. I might have these vivid dreams, but they, they're not going to hurt me. When you have that more acceptance approach, you're willing to experience these things, then you definitely have less of them for sure. And now, if you get to a point where you're like, or, or, or rather, if you're, if these are not sort of isolated events, if you know there's some more, uh, more um, of an underlying cause for the underlying hyperarousal, that's underlying the things, meaning specifically what I'm talking about here is if you have more of general general anxiety, if, if there if you know that you are generally anxious and that's probably why you're also high problems and these things happen, then I want to say this. Check out, you know, check out the description, uh, description to this video and check out the sleep, uh, the self-coaching model. It's a it's a playlist with a with a uh, with a series of videos that go over how your mind works and how thoughts really um our, our thoughts produce our emotions and that emotions are not, you know, this, it's not this emotional roller coaster that, you know, emotions have their life of their own thoughts are really what, what, what's, what are behind them and how you can work on your thoughts to have less anxiety. I think that is super, super helpful. And if you do uh, check out that playlist and you find that, you know what, that is, I like this. I think this is really helpful. I would like to actually know even more about this than check out our self-coaching program, our uh, self-coaching master program, which is really built on this model. I think it is really good for someone who has uh, trouble sleeping and maybe also anxiety, you know, because this, this model is so good for, for really anything, but particularly anxiety and of course, insomnia. So I hope this was really helpful. Um, uh, if you have any question, then please leave a comment or uh, send uh, an email to questions at the with that said, I'll be back uh, tomorrow and Friday as well. And I hope to see you back here really soon. Until then, take it easy. Hi, it's me, Coach Daniel. And I hope you are feeling excited right now because you're so close to the finish line of insomnia. And if you found that aha moment you've been looking for in this video, please share it with the world. Because you know, insomnia can be such a lonely and isolating place before you find our community. Speaking of which, if you would like some more personalized support on your journey, then head over to thesleepcoachschool.com. We have free and paid courses available with certified sleep coaches who have seen the worst of insomnia, left the struggle, and now are ready to help you. If you decide to join, we look forward to seeing you on the other side.